evening, everyone. Um, so it's um, it's December the eighth. It's uh, it's 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 actually the Ro Rohatsu Day today. So it's big, it's, it's, I guess it's the biggest day in the Buddhist calendar. Is it? Would you say it's the biggest day? Did you say that, Wu? We are, you know, you become our resident kind of academic historian. <laughs> I, I can only um, comment on the Korean tradition um, in which um, actually the lunar calendar, um, 8th of April, um, is taken as bi uh, bigger day. Oh, really? It's the birth date. So oh, okay. Birth date. Is that Waisak? Sir? Is that Waisak? I don't know what it is called in its oh. original language. <laughs> mm. I don't even know what language that is. <laughs> anyway. Um, I know you're going to be sitting tonight, and uh, I, I, it just occurred to me today, flashed into my mind, that I would really like it if we de dedicate tonight's sitting to Ken. I just realised how much I missed him today. Yeah, yeah. So, could I ask whoever's uh, lead, whoever, I know there's like a lead person for each two hour stretch, could that person light some incense and make a dedication to Ken? So, We'll, we'll give him the night. Yeah. Okay. Um, so last night, I just want to. There was something I didn't finish last night. Uh, I, I put real thinking about Ken. I pulled out something about Ken. Something that Ken had written uh, with reference to. So last night, for those of you who weren't here, we talked about the Cohen, which is a very simple one, which is um, a monk called Echo asks Hogan, who's a Zen teacher. What is Buddha? And Hogan says, you are Echo. That's it, that's it, that's the calling. You are Echo. He says, what is Buddha? And he says, you are Echo. So last night we discussed, or talked about, what does it mean to be, you are Buddha? And what does it mean to be, you are Echo? Or you are Dave, or you are Steph, or you are John? What does, what, what, is there any difference? And all those kind of things we talked about. Anyway, so I wanted to finish it with another, uh, Hogan has another teaching about what is Buddha, uh, which is in the same commentary. I thought I'd read it to you and uh, see what you think. It has a bit of, it has a, it has a turn in it. it. It may sound simple at first, but it has a turn in it. So I'll just read it to you. It's easier to read it. <coughs> Once a monk from another temple was staying at Hogan's assembly and had yet to approach Hogan for instruction. Hogan asked him, why have you never entered my room privately? In other words, how come you never come for private instruction for a Zen interview? The monk replied, oh didn't you know master? When I was with the previous assembly I had an awakening there. Meaning, I don't need to come to your room because I already understand. Then Hogan said, please present it to me. The monk said, I asked the teacher, what is Buddha? And the teacher said, the fire god comes seeking fire. Hogan looked at him and said, well those are wonderful words, but I think you have misunderstood. So the words he said when what is Buddha, the teacher said, the fire god comes seeking fire. Fire god or fire? The fire god, god comes seeking fire. Yeah, got it? So that, that's, the, that's this, this monk from another temple. His breakthrough was when asked what is Buddha, he said, the fire god comes seeking fire. Hogan looked at him and said, well, those are wonderful words, but I think you have misunderstood. Can you say more about it? And the monk says again, the fire god is already in the province of fire, and yet he comes seeking fire. Likewise, I am already Buddha, but I came asking about Buddha. Hogan observed, it's just as I thought, you have completely misunderstood. <laughs> The monk became angry, but contained himself out of respect, and to observe the proper decorum, however, he left the monastery, crossed the river, and began to walk away on the road. Hogan said to the assembly, 
If this monk comes back, he can be saved. If not, he cannot. That is an important point for all of us. If you can return to beginner's mind over and over again, manifesting the mind of openness, then that attitude is your salvation. But if you cannot turn back to that, regardless of what you have experienced or known or accomplished, then you are trapped. Your ego begins to creep in and that is a big problem. In our practice we have to repeatedly remind ourselves of that point over and over again, come back to the attitude of a beginner. Because even if you know something, you don't know it fully. That is why it is said that even the Buddha is still practicing. Okay, meanwhile, out on the road, the monk thought to himself, well, Master Hogan, he has 500 people at the monastery. He must know something. <laughs> so he decides to go back. And to cut a long story short, he says to Hogan, Well, what do you think, what is the Buddha? And Hogan replies, The fire God. I'm <laughs> 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 seeking fire. <laughs> So I don't know what your understanding is, <laughs> why, why you went there? It's that old story, you know, I mean he said it, but why, why do you think Hogan sent him away even though he said it and then repeated it to him when he came back? Because he thought he knew it. He thought mm. it was finished, it was complete, it was over with, um, yeah. it never is. Yeah, he thought he was, that was the job, job done. He'd realised that and he didn't ever need to go and see Hogan or anyone else ever again, yeah. yeah. Anyone else got any thoughts on it? Well, maybe the way that Logan lives the answer mm. rather than the guy. Yeah. Words and words mm. by his life. Okay. Right. And obviously he was dem the, uh, he, he was he was demonstrating some arrogance. The monk in the first place. So I guess when he came back, that that kind of yeah. Okay, so I'll read you what Ken says about Buddha nature. <coughs> so interesting. This is, sorry, it'd be yeah. interesting to know what the monk's reaction to that was right at the oh, end. Oh well, he was suddenly well, he, he was totally and fully enlightened. <laughs> <laughs> partially. Or did he leave again? <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it's in the true nature of these stories, he stayed on for another 30 years yeah, and became finally a fire a, an accomplished <laughs> teacher. Yeah. Okay. So this is what Ken says uh, from uh, Beyond Mindfulness. Each of us has a true nature, a Buddha nature, a Buddha or in brackets awakened nature, revealed when we become aware that mortal fear is not a necessity of the human condition. There's a very Ken thing for you, gets right to the bones. Each of us has a true nature, a Buddha or awakened nature revealed when we become aware that mortal fear is not a necessity of the human condition. What's the most important word in that sentence? Yeah. You, you, what, nearly. <laughs> The one that goes before mortal, mortal yeah, yeah, because I think Ken's sense was, I think probably quite correctly, that an awful lot of what finally uh, causes us lots of sleep anxiety and, and a whole range of things is finally the fear of death, or certainly the death of the ego. Uh, anyway, he says. We, became, we, we become aware that mortal fear is not a necessity of the human condition. More or less masked in each of us, this true nature is always there, always our potential, and always capable of manifesting itself. In each of our lives, what we do about our self-need may indeed 
be alloyed with a relatively selfless fellow spirit which partakes of our true nature in service and in friendship. What the hang on? What does that mean? Oh, I see. He, he said he's saying that, that the potential for our expressing our Buddha nature is always there and capable of manifesting itself. Oh, I see. So he says, in each of our lives, what we do out of self need, or what we selfishly do, may also indeed be alloyed with a relatively selfless fellow spirit which partakes of our true nature in service and in friendship. One expression of the Buddha nature is that everything is basically all right. Something proclaimed by mystics from Mother Julian of Norwich to T.S. Eliot. And then he goes on to point out, absolutely correctly, that of course the universe is also a hellish place as well. <laughs> and it's interesting because I came across that piece because I had been intending this evening to talk about the idea of this great design, you know, that there is a great design that alludes, you know, that we can't make any mistakes because everything is kind of predestined, there is a great design, so everything is okay, finally everything is okay, I wanted to talk about that, but it's kind of turns up another track, but it's a worth, it's a something worth thinking about, you know, what, what, what is this paradox that we have to live with, that on the one hand everything is fine, And on the other, we have the news from Syria, or whatever, you know, whatever hellish thing that's happening at any one time. You know, it's an interesting dynamic to think about, or paradox. Now, to go back to Ken, oh, he mentions it here as well, he says, so, one expression, of, one expression of the Buddha nature is that everything is basically all right. Something proclaimed by mystics from Mother Julian of Norwich to T.S. Eliot. Of course, the universe is also a hellish place as well. This is one of the paradoxes which you either know or you don't, and grinding away at it with logic won't help. The only way is to deploy poetry or other ways of getting in around the side, seeing things out of the corner of your eye. And beyond this lies another cone. Nothing matters and everything matters. This in turn relates to the more direct question which the great Japanese Buddhist humanist put to his activist followers in the wake of the Second World War. Right now, if nothing you do is of any avail, what do you do? If right now, if nothing you do is of any avail, what do you do? What do you think? <laughs> You do something anyway. You do something anyway, yeah. What have you got to lose? What have you got to lose, yeah? 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 Right now, if nothing you do is of any avail, what do you do? Who's judging anyway? Pardon? Who's judging is not avail? Yeah. Well, Yeah, it's interesting. So I mean, I suppose it's sort of theoretical what, 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 I mean, uh, last night on the, on the news, it mentioned an earthquake in Indonesia where 150 people have died. And I said to Suzanne, why, why are they telling me that? What can I do? You know, what can I do about 150 people who have died in an earthquake in Indonesia on some small island? That's a kind of example, I guess, I, I was thinking of. Mm. <laughs> to give in. It's also about not doing stuff for the outcome. You know, you do things. You just do it, yeah. Yeah, you do it because it's yeah. the right thing to do, or you need to do it, not because. Yeah, well, there's that famous story, isn't it, about the birds, the forest fire, a hundred miles from the ocean, and little birds with little beaks fly a hundred miles and scoop up a little water, fly all the way back to the forest fire and drop it and go again. I can't imagine it makes any difference, but... 
So and so, we were talking earlier today about, you know, um, uh, fatigue. <coughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So you've seen bad news, human suffering constantly displayed, and uh, of course it's easy uh, or sometimes necessary to turn away from it. But it, just in answer to your question, I, I mean, th th this thing of the relative and absolute perspective uh, seems to me like I, had, I have this small life here where I can make judgments. Yeah. about the rest of it. By also, by also uh, intellectually, scientifically, in whatever, I, I am aware that I'm part of a bigger deal. Yeah. It's, you know, it's all around me. Uh, um, that great life. And that great life has, has its own sort of logic which is far beyond the logic of my small desires within it. But the two things are operating at the same time, clearly. Yeah. clearly. The universe is, you know, you know, paraphrasing JFK is, is um, you know, ask not what the universe could do for you, um, <laughs> <laughs> but what you might do for the universe. So, you know, the island in Indonesia or Aleppo or stuff like that, I suppose, I mean, at one, at one level, of course, you, you, you can't, we're invited to save all sentient beings and we, by practicing the way we do, but that doesn't necessarily mean shooting off to Indonesia mm. on the next flight. Um, mm. But actually, sometimes just bearing witness to it, you know, just the fact that mm. I'm aware of these, I'm, I'm mm. taking this in, mm. that this is an awful. Mm. Mm. But you're like, you're like Camille said on the Crosby retreat when he did his bit, he, he also said rather movingly, but mm. it is still a beautiful world, isn't mm. it? Right mm. at the end of it, despite mm. all this mm. suffering. Mm. Um, yeah. It reminds me like when the Titanic in the band just kept playing. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, there was yeah. no kind of hope of saving anyone, but they just kept playing to yeah. alleviate this, you know, yeah. mm. and the tension and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> Interesting, you bring up the idea why are they showing me that? And that's a good question. I don't know what you think. It seems to me. When I can't do anything at all practically, if I bear witness to it, if I keep myself informed, somehow, I don't know why, I feel, well, that's, at least I'm acknowledging, at least I'm witnessing that these things are happening. Not, mm. not so much sort of acts of God, you want to call it that, but acts of man, wickedness and, and deceit, somehow, yeah. I keep looking at it. Mm. I mm. I've got an answer to, to why they keep showing it. I read something uh, recently that they, somebody put on a good news channel and it was all full of good news and, and nobody was watching yeah. it. Yeah. 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 They're all about finally yeah. making a profit, don't they? So, yeah. 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 Shall I read you what Ken carries on to say about Dogen and Buddha Nature? Hmm. You're familiar with it, I guess, but I'll read it again. Dogen Zenji was not the first to maintain that we, and indeed all beings, are the Buddha nature. But his writings on it are particularly penetrating and extensive. He struggled with the question that if practice and enlightenment are one, and we are already intrinsically enlightened, why then should we exhaust ourselves to practice at all? Ken says, there is an analogy here with learning to play the piano or to swim. We all have the potential, but we still need to practice chords and strokes. Desire here is necessary, whereas in the realization of his Buddha nature, it is desire itself which is the obstacle, not the attainment. I think Ken probably needed this editing a bit, to be honest. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, well, I would have edited this. I but anyway. Dogen emphasizes that if you practice the way of the Buddha, you should expect nothing, seek nothing, cut off the mind that seeks and do not cherish the desire to gain the fruits of Buddhahood. This presents continuous practice. This present continuous practice is nothing other than just committing oneself to continuous practice for no other than the reason than to practice continuously. <laughs> 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 
thing about editing is that uh, Kent editor was a student of his, and so he was in awe of Kent, so he wouldn't have picked him up. No, no doubt. Mm -hmm. I'll read you something personal, I'll get off dog, and I just want to give a flavour of Ken really, and he says, I know a lot of people who have practiced Buddhism for many years, and I have Sangha friends going back for decades. Some of these people have never had any profound insight. They've worn out the sandal of samsara, attending countless retreats. They keep coming back. They have faith. They are quiet, kindly, basically sound sort of people. What is their faith? And he goes on to say, in some ways, faith is the most mysterious of the foursome of belief, faith, insight, and internalization. Faith somehow it intuits what is beyond belief, and in the person of faith, dogmatic and proselytizing further the diminished to be replaced with a wry smile and a shrug of the shoulders. <laughs> Anyway, he goes on to say what Dogen lists is the many activities which you may undertake if you wish to arouse the supreme thought of enlightenment, which are such as taking refuge, bowing to the Buddha even while you are being disturbed by demons, practicing good to even the slightest extent possible to you, doing zazen, reading the sutras, making a stupa, even with a blade of grass, and so on and so on. In short, in all these activities, however modest and limited, one formally acts as if one were the Buddha. So there we are, that's a way that we can... <coughs> you know, when you say, what is Buddha? We can say, well, even to the slightest extent that it's possible to me, I try and exercise kindness. <laughs> Sensei, can I, just, can I just ask yeah. something? Yeah. Because Sorry, I I'm rambling now. I might have missed. I might have misunderstood something. Yeah. Or just. Or, oh, anyway, yeah, go ahead. Um, the. I'm sure that he said a minute ago that you need to have no thought of enlightenment. Yeah. And then gave a list of ways that yeah. you could arouse the thought of enlightenment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was right, okay. <laughs> okay. That's exactly right. right okay. And that's why Dogen is so penetratingly difficult to understand because there uh, are uh, lots of contradictions, which actually really aren't contradictions. Right. Because, I mean, what he says, the, 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 things he, the things that he suggests that one does don't have any kind of ego touch, mm -hmm. not much anyway. You know, when he says, um, Uh, what, what he says, where's it going? Yeah. This suggests the relevance of liturgy, which is such as sutras, robes, and other traditional outward manifestations of it to engendering their faith, that faith which is so indispensable for Dogen, and which for go getting Westerners, I know those who are go getting, you know, one, the big might be inclined to dismiss as mere distractions from the great goal. So he does yeah. hear what you said. Okay. Yeah. He's saying that you know, the things that we all choose to do here on a Wednesday or Thursday night are okay. They're not distractions. They are actually the practice of good nature. I was thinking that if you like make a stupa from a blade of grass, that's not something to be proud of. It's not something you can say, look at this, how big it is. There's yeah. no ego in, well, I was slightly kind to Jez today. Yeah. You know, nice. Yeah, thank you. That's a right. good point. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, um, the, the, the final to what we spoke about last night, i.e. The, 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 those of you who weren't here, the car, managing to climb up the three terraces of the waterfall and not to be swimming around in the pool, in the pool at the bottom of the water pool, waterfall the message seemed to be to get on with it you know? and the message here seems to be 
not get on with it. Desire and no desire. Sorry, the, That's what he says, desire and no desire. Desire and no desire, yeah, yeah. So a wonderful paradox. We'll get on with it, but don't try too hard. Yeah. <laughs> For me, um, things that I can do effortlessly now only came after a shadow of effort. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, at the moment, I can't do Dogen's way of effortlessness. No. And therefore, I'll go forth full effort. Yeah, and which is exactly what Ken says. The analogy is then to play the piano or swim, we have to do chords and strokes a hundred million times before we're really good at it. Yeah. Yeah, so so I, I wouldn't like to deceive myself thinking, oh, effortlessness. No. <laughs> because, no. to be honest, no. this takes effort. Yeah. Well, I know certainly some of the monks that trained with Dogen would fasten themselves <laughs> in ropes so that they couldn't change position. Yeah. <laughs> or move, or... Look, we've ruined the ideas for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're going to wish you matchsticks or eyelids tonight. <laughs> anyway, look, I hope you have a, I hope it goes well this evening. I um, I won't see much. I won't see much of you tomorrow. It's my birthday tomorrow. I'm going to have the day off. So I might see you, you know, in passing in the day. Uh, I'll certainly come in in the evening and say hello or the afternoon. But I hope it goes fine. And um, are we okay for everything else Saturday? I'll, I'll be here yeah. Saturday of course yeah. for the Duke Eye ceremony. Yeah. Um, Have a good birthday. Sometime. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks everybody. Yeah. 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 We're done. <coughs>